Hi, welcome to our Revwise video. Today we'll be looking at gas exchange in humans, which is specification 0.2.46 to 2.49. Throughout this video, I'll be drawing simple diagrams of the structures that you need to know. So I do encourage you to draw along and label these diagrams with me into your notes. All right, so first gas exchange. So gas exchange in humans, it's the intake of oxygen and the elimination of carbon dioxide, which is necessary for survival. This happens by diffusion, um, which is you know the passive movement of molecules from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Multicellular organisms have exchange surfaces and organ systems. So in humans, these are the lungs. So the first point, um, 2.46, you have to know the structure of the thorax. So here is my very poorly drawn breathing system. The aspects that you have to know are the ribs. It's a bone structure and its job, its role is to protect the lungs. Um, in between the ribs, we've got intercostal muscles. There are two kinds of intercostal muscles, which are external intercostal muscles and internal intercostal muscles, but we'll look at their roles a bit later. In the video. We've also got the pleural membrane. It's just a thin layer of tissue that lines the walls of the lungs and the inner walls of the chest cavity. We've got the diaphragm. This is our diaphragm. <laughs> the diaphragm is just a large sheet of tissue and muscle that lies underneath the lungs. And then we've got the trachea. Um, the trachea? Tra trachea. We've got the trachea. And this is just also known as the windpipe. This just connects the mouth and the nose to the lungs. It pr uh, provides a passage for the air to pass through. The trachea branches out into two bronchi. And then from the bronchi, it branches out into several bronchioles. And then at the very tip of the bronch bronchioles are tiny little air sacs, which we call alveoli. And the alveoli is where gas exchange takes place. They're tiny little air sacs and they're covered in blood vessels so that gas exchange takes place between the blood and the lungs. We've got loads of alveoli in the lungs. So yeah, in size order, I feel like this is something helpful to remember. Size order, it goes... The trachea branches out into two bronchi, which branches out into several bronchioles, which have air sacs, alveoli, at the end. Yeah, that's the order. Something that you should also know is the role of mucus and cilia. So the passage to the lungs, including the trachea and the bronchi, are lined with ciliated cells and with goblet cells. Here we've got ciliated cells. So this, these little hair thingies, that's called cilia. We have goblet cells as well. So goblet cells produce something called mucus. The mucus traps particles like dust, dirt, bacteria, or any other pathogens, and it prevents them from getting into the lungs. The role of the cilia is to waft out any of the mucus to the nose and the throat where they can just be spat out or swallowed. So this prevents any pathogens like bacteria, viruses from getting into the lungs and damaging any of the cells there. So ventilation is just the exchange of air between the atmosphere and the lungs. Um, in other words, it's breathing. And there are two aspects that play a role in ventilation, which are the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. Here's the mechanism and how it works. So for inhalation, which is drawing air from outside into the lungs, the intercostal muscles pull the rib cage up and out. Specifically, external intercostal muscles. We've got to get that terminology up and out. And the diaphragm contracts and flattens, which means it's pulled downwards. This allows the space of the chest cavity to increase. This means that there's a lower pressure inside the lungs. That means there's a relatively higher pressure in the atmosphere. And because of a pressure gradient, air rushes into the lungs. I hope that makes sense. For exhalation, essentially the opposite happens. So exhalation is releasing air from the lungs into the atmosphere. You've got the intercostal muscles, specifically the internal intercostal muscles, pulling the rib cage bones inwards and down. 
And then you've got the diaphragm relaxing. It moves upwards. This causes the space of the chest cavity to decrease, the volume decreases, which means that it has a higher pressure. There's a relatively lower pressure in the atmosphere, and as a result, air from inside the lungs rushes outwards. Being asked to explain the ventilation system is actually a pretty common exam question, so make sure you know the mechanism of ventilation, both inhalation and exhalation. Alright, so here's a post paper question that we can do. Let's answer the first question. This is just, this is the right lung because images are mirrored. The rib cage, And C is the heart, which isn't really like related but that's okay and we've got the diaphragm all right so question b asks to describe how structures b and d helped a person to breathe in so looking back at it structures b and d was a rib cage and the diaphragm this is a five marker question so be sure to memorize the whole the ventilation mechanisms that we learned earlier to hit all of the points. So breathing in means inhalation. Let's refer back to the points that we learned earlier to answer this question. When inhalation happens, air needs to rush inwards. So in order for air to rush inwards, we want the, the volume of the chest cavity to increase. There needs to be more space inside the lungs. So for that to happen, the diaphragm needs to be pulled down. For the diaphragm to be pulled down, it contracts because it's a muscle. And when the diaphragm contracts, it's pulled downwards and it's flattened. Something else that happens is that the intercostal muscles must pull the rib cage upwards and outwards in order to allow the lungs to have more space. So let's write the intercostal muscles. As a result, let's talk about how that increases the volume of the lungs and that decreases the pressure. So those are essentially all the points that you can get. It's a very straightforward system to learn, so you just have to understand it and you'll be sure to hit all the points for this. Here is the mark scheme for this question. And the alveoli, which are the air sacs of the lungs where gas exchange occurs. They are highly specialized and you need to remember all of the adaptations. So remember, the role of the alveoli is to exchange gases by diffusion between air in the lungs and blood in the capillaries. So these are some ways that they have been adapted to do that. First, alveoli have thin walls that are only one cell thick. This allows for a shorter diffusion distance for the gases. Also, it's important to mention that these walls are permeable, obviously, <laughs> to allow the gases to pass through. It's also got a large surface area, so the shape of the alveoli, it's rounded, and there's also a lot of them in the lungs. So you've got your bronchi, your bronchioles branching out, all with multiple alveoli on them. You've got a large number of them, so this increases the rate of diffusion. Also, the walls of the alveoli are moist. Moist walls in the capillaries and in the alveoli allows the gases to dissolve, which helps it diffuse across both the surfaces. There is also a sufficient blood supply, so we've got a large network of capillaries surrounding the alveoli. The capillaries take carbon dioxide to the lungs and oxygen away from the lungs, so by keeping the blood moving, this ensures that there's always a low concentration of oxygen in the capillaries. And this means there will be a higher concentration of oxygen in the alveoli air sacs. This causes a larger concentration gradient, and this allows for diffusion to happen more quicker. And the same goes for carbon dioxide. By keeping the carbon dioxide moving, uh, the capillaries take the carbon dioxide to the lungs, so there will always be a high concentration of carbon dioxide as compared to a lower concentration of carbon dioxide in the alveoli air sacs. This helps to move carbon dioxide from the capillaries to the lungs and where it can be expelled.
So ventilation is what ensures that there's always a high concentration of oxygen and a low concentration of carbon dioxide inside the air sacs. So again, this, this creates a concentration gradient, maintaining high oxygen in the alveoli through inhalation and low carbon dioxide by exhalation. Large concentration gradient allows for faster diffusion of oxygen from alveoli to capillaries and faster diffusion of carbon dioxide from capillaries to air sacs. So 0.2.49 looks at the effects of smoking on the lungs and the respiratory system. So this is really just a case of memorizing and understanding what the different effects of smoking are. There are a number of effects of cigarettes and smoking that you need to remember. So first off, we have nicotine. There are a couple of things that you have to know about it. It increases the heart rate. It also narrows blood vessels as well as cause blood clots. So there are a couple of things that we need to know about tar. First of all, it's a carcinogen, so it's a cancer-causing substance. It also contributes to bronchitis. Tar coats the cilia in the trachea and it destroys the cilia as well as stimulates the goblet cells to produce more mucus. With these two factors in mind, there will be a buildup of mucus because there's less cilia to waft out the excess production of mucus. This causes something called smoker's cough, which you might have heard of. A smoker's cough is just attempting to remove the mucus by coughing. This mucus contains dirt, dust, bacteria, pathogens, so it could lead to infection of the bronchial tubes and even the lungs. Tar can also cause something called emphysema, so when tar droplets condensate onto the walls of alveoli and you start coughing, this coughing can cause the walls of your alveoli to break down. As they break down, there will be less surface area for gas exchange and that reduces the oxygen intake and the carbon dioxide expelling, which can lead to breathlessness. So this image shows what a damaged alveoli from emphysema can look like. Essentially, emphysema is just the destruction of alveoli sacs by tar, which reduces the surface area for gas exchange. So carbon monoxide is another substance that can enter your body from smoking. It binds to hemoglobin irreversibly, and this results in less hemoglobin being available to carry oxygen around in the blood. So more frequent and deep breathing is required to intake the same amount of oxygen. And this also means that the circulatory system needs to pump blood faster and harder around the blood to ensure oxygen is distributed, which means the heart has to work harder. So overall, these are the different diseases that smoking and cigarettes can cause. It can cause lung cancer, it can cause COPD, which we looked at uh, emphysema and bronchitis earlier. It could also cause coronary heart disease. And looking at the different ways that the substances and chemicals affect the lungs and the circulatory system, you should be able to explain biologically how smoking can cause all of these different diseases. Okay, so let's do some exam questions. This is just a two marker that I found. The question reads, emphysema is a lung disease that is usually caused by smoking. The diagram shows a cross-section through two alveoli X and Y. So this alveoli is from a non-smoker and this one is from a smoker suffering from emphysema. So we looked at this earlier. Use the diagram to suggest and explain the effect of emphysema on gas exchange. As we can see here, this alveolus is much larger in shape than this alveolus, which indicates that a non-smoker's alveoli has a far bigger surface area than a smoker's alveoli. So we can talk about how emphysema causes a smaller surface area of the alveoli that causes less gas exchange to take place. And if there's less gas exchange, there'll be less intake of oxygen. Because this is just a two marker, that's essentially all that you need. So for this one, we've got a five marker here. Again, this is just a case of memorizing all of the different effects that smoking can have on humans, both in their lungs and for the circulatory system. So there are a couple of things that we can talk about to hit five marks here. Let's first look at emphysema. So emphysema is caused by tar. Emphysema is the destruction, the breakdown of the walls of the alveoli, which means we've got a smaller surface area. 
And as a result, that means there's less gas exchange, just like we just talked about in the last question. So there's emphysema we can talk about. We could also talk about bronchitis. So bronchitis is also caused by tar in cigarettes. And this destroys or damages cilia, but it also causes the goblet cells to produce mucus excessively. Because there's a decreased number of cilia, there'll be a buildup of mucus, which could then lead to an infection. Earlier in the video, we also looked at carbon monoxide affecting the body, but carbon monoxide primarily affects the circulatory system by limiting the amount of oxygen that can be carried. And we could also talk about the effects of nicotine, but nicotine looks at the narrowing of blood vessels and the blockage and clotting blood vessels as well. So be sure that you're reading the question because those two look at the circulatory system, but this question is asking about the human lungs. So something else that we could talk about is lung cancer. Cigarettes can contain carcinogens. So carcinogens are cancer-causing substances. This therefore could affect the lungs. I mean, there are a couple of points that we got here. Again, make sure you're reading the question. If this had asked, if this question was on the circulatory system, then you could mention nicotine. You could mention carbon monoxide. But yeah, no, this is this is this is pretty good. This is this is probably all five marks hit. So yeah, that'll be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and understood and you drew alongside my diagrams. If there's anything you don't understand, be sure to leave a comment and we'll answer as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and good luck with your studies.